we were talking to you about Paperless Environments AP Workflow Program. Another workflow program that they have that is so unique that no one else in the industry has this is their payroll program. And we're going to show that to you today by PowerPoint because of the way it works, but you will get the idea. So here we go. We're going to log into Paperless. As I walk you through this PowerPoint, you'll basically see some of the screens that you saw in the previous videos. However, we call this auto batch processing. And what auto batch processing does is basically allow you to scan your time cards into the system in a batch, and you'll see all your time cards listed over here, just like you saw our AP invoices, if you watch that part of the video with a list of all the invoices to be processed. Down below here, in this screen, as we move further through the demo, you're going to see that the software is going to give us some feedback as to what confidence level it has and what it's reading on the payroll time card and suggested values. And down below here we have the colors are telling us that's where our cursor is currently at and then where it's got an issue and where we've actually made some changes. So let's go ahead and move on to the next screen and this is what a typical time card looks like. What we're doing here is actually taking the time cards that you're used to using every day and there's been many processes out there that have been tried, don't really work all that well, sometimes they do, but we've seen PDAs, distributed processing, trying to come in on the web, but in construction, the time card is still the mainstay of how time gets recorded and input into the accounting system and job costing system. However, what we've done here is take the time card and actually, they actually have boxes where people fill in their time and for the most part we can emulate the time card that you're using already with very little changes. However, what we are doing behind the scenes is actually programming every cell that you see here and actually there's code behind that to do such things as validate the employee number to your accounting system, payroll system, validating cost codes to your accounting system, validating jobs, and we'll even do the math checking. So in this case as we look across here, this is a time card that goes from Wednesday through Thursday, but the totals go across. And then we have down totals going down through here to keep track of the overtime and the regular time. So now the time card is on the screen. The first place that it lands at is what you can see right here. The red indicate where the software is having an issue. So we must move through that to validate it as we go through. Over here, it's telling me that it looks like an 06. It is an 06, it has no suggested suggestions to change that, and its confidence level is 680. So we're just going to hit the enter key as we move through that, and it accepted that. It's now moving on to here, where it's looking at a cost code, it looks at 2100, it's supposed to be 1500, it thinks it was 1500 because it was raced behind the scenes, and we're going to go ahead and actually key in 2100. Now watch what happens when I override the suggested value. I click on that, I hit the 2100 down here, hit the enter key, and it actually shows now in yellow that I have changed that value. However, behind the scenes, it's always going to have the original value. So later on, when we want to look at the original time card, we can print it with or without our annotations or the changes that we made. Now you can see the person scribbled a little bit on here. They had one hour of overtime on Wednesday. You meant to write an A, it looks like a 1, the software's having a little bit of trouble reading that, but we go down here, we enter in here that it was a 1, and we just keep moving through. So as we follow through the time card, we just keep hitting enter, and it's making the changes, we're either validating them that they're okay, or they're not, and wherever we make the changes along the way, you're going to see the annotations up here. Now it's telling me here that the hours are, that they put 9, but we can really see that the math is really 8. So the, pro so the software has actually been programmed to check the math on the time card as well, which is a real bonus as well. So we have the software doing for us as much as we can to alleviate the tedious of having to key time cards in. Now I'm going to keep going on down through it, and then finally is checking the down totals. Since we made changes up here, the total that was here originally is not, is not good, so finally it's going to come down here and change that to 12, and also, I also have a different change down here on the 52. It suggested to me that we really need 53 because that's the new total. So I accept that value, and now I'm done with that time card, and it takes me into a list of all the time cards that I've been working on that I've already validated. 
And so what I can do now is I can either select all of them if they're okay to go into the accounting system. And what it's going to do down here is create a file to send to your payroll system and what folder that you want it in once I click finalize items. And when I do that, I'm done. And once I click on that, I basically the time card behind the scenes now has been indexed into the vault. So now we can look that time card up by pay period ending date, by employee, by job, by cost code, by any of the indexes that you would see. So, logging back into the paperless system, we can now click on the search button, and we click on the search button, we're going to be looking for that time card. So we just click on the payroll weekly timesheet that we want to see. If you recall, that employee we looked at before was 6497. We clicked on it, and it brings the timesheet up here. In our viewer, as we saw before, it found that timesheet, and it has all these codes on it down below here that we could, we could have searched for it by job cost code, by job number, or we could search for all the time cards charged to a certain job number and a certain cost code for a certain pay period ending date or a range of pay period ending dates. Just that easy. When we click on the double click on the time card here, we see it come back up on the screen. So now what we've done is, is we've automated the process and really kept your current system in place by still having the time cards but we have tremendously speeded up the time for you to process it because now your payroll person will have much more time to actually sit back and look at the payroll and validate it and take care of any issues versus spending that time key punching because the software is actually validating that all along the way and that is our payroll processing program it's simple and it actually is simple and so we can have the time cards come in from the field by you know, they can either drop them off, they can actually key punch them in on an Excel spreadsheet and get them in that way, or they can fax them in. Whatever way we get them in, we put them in an auto batch processor. And one of our clients actually has 500 employees on their time uh, that they process every week, actually every day, because they do daily time cards with equipment on it. And they actually went from two and a half people managing that payroll down to one person who starts every day around 8 o'clock and before noon they've actually got all those time cards into the system.